how's your life changed since being Mr. Olympia? Did you did you hold down a, a, a job when you first started training and, and becoming a pro, well, as well as your bodybuilding? Well, you're I obviously first, full time now. Yeah, when I when I first began uh, bodybuilding, um, I was working two, if not three jobs. Really, what were you doing, Phil? I was doing web development. I was being a bouncer. I was helping kids, uh, you know, because I was doing a you know, playing basketball in college, I actually did basketball academy training and oh, stuff like excellent. that. So sure. I was doing a lot of different things, small jobs here and there, you know, yeah, yeah. along the way. And, uh, you know, ended up just working primarily at a gym and then um, learning about uh, supplements and stuff like that. And that and working at the gym helped me out a lot because in my spare time, I, all I did was read magazines and read books about training. Yeah. So I really immersed myself into that. And you know, obviously now it's a full-time gig, but uh, I'd say, Placing second uh, in 2010, I was able to see um, obviously what it felt like to be, you know, a top two guy in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the time, you got to think, Ronnie Coleman's already retired. Um, Jay Cutler, you know, is already at the pinnacle of his career. So those two guys would get a lot of guest appearances, but they couldn't do all of them. Mm -hmm. So their overflow came to me. Sure. So I was actually working, you know, getting gigs kind of like as Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. So, even though you played second. Though, exactly. So, right. And a lot of people wanted me to win, you know, in 2010. So a lot of those promoters actually had me signed up. Yeah. Because they wanted to have me out. They were pretty smart. They probably figured, well, I can get a Mr. Olympia for cheap. Exactly. <laughs> for cheaper than exactly. Mr. Olympia. Yeah. So, so I would say, you know, now after winning, a lot more appearances like this. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more uh, global travel, mm -hmm. which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and, and really... For me, the biggest thing that's changed is that I've seen my likeness grow more and more, and people are paying attention more of what I have to talk about yep. and what I'm doing. Yep. So, so for me, it reminds me of you know always putting my best foot forward, yeah. always uh, being true to myself and being true to the fans, yeah. and, and giving them as, as much of me as possible, right. but yet still being selfish with my time so I can train and eat and be, sure, be the exactly. bodybuilder that I am. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. You're the ultimate role model now. So, right. so you're very mindful of what you say and what you do, Absolutely. and so that's changed. Yeah, you, you know, I always try to, uh, you know, make sure that I'm not being disingenuous. I'm always being a genuine person. Yeah. But but at the same time, you know, you, know, you just have to be mindful. Of sometimes a joke may be uh, taken the wrong way by someone else because you have to think. I could write something online in a blog, and someone, you know, take it the wrong way, go online. And, and rip me up to shreds. But at the yep. end of the day, I have to also realize that I can't please everyone. Yeah. And, and the true fans know my true intentions. And, you know, I'm just being who I am. Yep. But, but yeah, you, you have to be a mature person. You have to realize that you're not representing just yourself. You're representing yeah. the entire sport. sport exactly. Yep.